The Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic will come to order. I want to welcome everyone here today. Without objection, the Chair may declare a recess at any time. I now recognize myself for the purpose of making an opening statement. I would like to thank the witnesses for their testimony at the Select Subcommittee's final hearing. The COVID-19 pandemic stands as one of the most devastating crises in our nation's history. It claimed the lives of millions of Americans, disrupted livelihoods, and took a profound physical, emotional, and economic toll on families and communities across the country. Sadly, this likely will not be the last pandemic. There will be others that test our nation's preparedness and resiliency in the future. So we're here today to look at the lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic in order to prepare for and hopefully prevent the next one. In the last two years, the Select Subcommittee has sent 118 investigative letters, conducted 38 transcribed interviews, held 25 hearings, and reviewed nearly 1 million pages of documents. The work of the Select Subcommittee revealed serious flaws in the government's response to the pandemic, underscoring the need for reforms. We saw consistent, contradictory guidance from this inconsistent, I'm sorry, contradictory guidance from the CDC that sowed confusion and diminished trust. Students were out of the classroom and told to attend school remotely, even when the science had started to clearly demonstrate it was safe for them to be back in the classroom. We saw Americans pressured to receive a vaccine. They were assured that it would make them a dead end for the virus and prevent reinfection and transmission, something that was known to be false based on vaccine trials. And at the NIH, there was a glaring lack of oversight over federal grants that posed risk to public health and national security, and millions in taxpayer dollars funded risky gain-of-function research in China. We found nefarious behavior by several federal funded, federally funded actors, actions that betray the trust of the American citizens. We must learn from these errors, take the lessons to heart, and make fundamental changes. We must establish clearly defined roles with an overarching structure that empowers agencies to act swiftly and effectively in mitigating the spread of novel viruses, as an example. It is essential for institutions such as NIAID and CDC to execute their assigned missions, functions, and tasks, and not stray out of their respective lanes. For example, NIAID is entrusted with vaccine development, while the CDC is tasked with controlling and containing the spread of diseases. Throughout the pandemic, NIAID encroached into CDC's lane by advising on matters pertaining to containing the spread, creating confusion among the American people. Poor decisions made by federal agencies shattered trust in our public health institutions and left Americans questioning the very leadership that was supposed to protect them. Decisions made out of a lack of knowledge and data is one thing, but poor decisions must be corrected. To be successful in the next pandemic, our federal public health institutions must be accountable to the people again. To be successful, our health organizations must do what they are supposed to do, protect Americans. Stronger oversight, better accountability, and improved structure within our agencies are essential. Congress must consider a dedicated authority to oversee agency practices, ensuring that agencies act solely within their areas of statutory responsibilities and subject matter expertise, and insisting that public health decisions are transparent, consistent, and credible. Let today's hearing be a step toward lasting reforms that will protect future generations from similar crises. I want to thank you, and I look forward to a strong on-topic discussion today. I would now like to recognize